If you're taking creatine but not seeing results, feeling bloated, tired, or just confused about whether it's even working, this video is absolutely for you. Creatine is one of the most researched, tested, and proven supplements in the world. Athletes, doctors, and researchers have studied it for decades. And yet, despite all that evidence, a huge number of people still walk away disappointed. Not because creatine doesn't work, but because they're using it the wrong way without realizing it. Most mistakes with creatine aren't dramatic or obvious. They're small habits, misunderstandings, or expectations that slowly ruin your results over time. Things like taking too much, not drinking enough water, quitting too early, or expecting instant results. On their own, they don't seem like a big deal, but together they can make creatine feel useless, uncomfortable, or even frustrating. That's when people start blaming the supplement instead of the way it's being used. And that's a shame, because when creatine is used correctly, it can improve strength, energy, recovery, and even everyday performance. It's simple, affordable, and effective, if you understand how it actually works inside your body. The problem is, nobody really explains the practical side. You hear the hype, but not the details that actually matter. So today, we're fixing that. I'm breaking down six common mistakes that quietly ruin your creatine results, mistakes that even experienced lifters and everyday users make all the time. More importantly, I'll show you exactly how to fix them, so creatine finally starts working the way it's supposed to. And you get the benefits you signed up for in the first place. Mistake number one, expecting instant results. Let's clear this up right away. Creatine is not caffeine, and treating it like one is one of the biggest mistakes people make. You don't take a scoop and suddenly feel a rush of energy or instant strength. That's not how creatine works at all. Creatine works quietly in the background by slowly saturating your muscle cells with stored energy. This process takes time, usually anywhere from one to three weeks, depending on your body size, diet, and consistency. Here's where most people mess it up. They take creatine for three or four days, don't feel anything dramatic, and immediately assume it's useless. I guess it doesn't work for me, they say. And they stop. But that's like planting a seed, watering it for two days, and then giving up because nothing has grown yet. Creatine doesn't give you a spike. It gives you a buildup. And that buildup is what leads to more strength, better endurance, and improved recovery. Think of creatine like filling a gas tank slowly instead of getting a quick boost. Each daily dose adds a little more until your muscles are fully saturated. Once that happens, that's when you start noticing the difference. Workouts feel easier, you can push out an extra rep, daily tasks feel less tiring, and recovery improves. But none of that happens if you quit early. The real mistake isn't that creatine doesn't work, it's impatience. People expect instant feedback in a world where caffeine, pre-workouts, and energy drinks hit fast. Creatine plays a long game, and that's exactly why it's so effective. If you stay consistent, take it daily, and give it time, the results eventually show up in ways that actually matter. So remember this, patience isn't optional with creatine. It's required. Stick with it long enough, and you'll finally understand why it's one of the most trusted supplements in the world. Mistake number two, taking too much too fast. More is not better. And this is where a lot of people get creatine completely wrong. Somewhere along the way, the idea spread that if a little creatine is good, a lot must be even better. That's how people end up doing aggressive loading phases or taking huge doses only to deal with bloating, stomach cramps, nausea, or bathroom problems a few days later. Then, they blame creatine and quit. In reality, the problem isn't creatine, it's overdoing it. Your body doesn't need to be flooded with creatine to benefit from it. Creatine works by gradually filling your muscle cells over time, not by shocking your system all at once. When you dump large amounts into your body, especially in a single dose, your digestive system can struggle to handle it. This is even more common if you're sensitive, don't drink enough water, or take it on an empty stomach. The result? Uncomfortable side effects that make creatine seem like a bad idea. Here's the simple truth backed by research. 
a steady daily dose of 3 ton or 5 grams works just as well in the long run as any loading phase. Yes, loading can fill your muscles faster, but it doesn't improve the final results. You'll still reach full saturation, just a little more slowly, and with far fewer digestive issues. For most people, that trade-off is more than worth it. Think of creatine like building a savings account. You don't need to deposit everything on day one, small, consistent deposits add up over time and get you to the same place, without the stress. Taking 3 to 5 grams daily is easier to stick with, gentler on your stomach, and far more sustainable long term. The biggest mistake isn't taking too little, it's taking too much too fast. Creatine rewards consistency, not extremes. If you keep your dose simple, stay hydrated and take it every day, your body will respond exactly the way it's supposed to. Slow, steady, and consistent always wins here, especially when it comes to supplements that are meant to work over time. Mistake number three, not drinking enough water. Creatine pulls water into your muscles, and that's actually one of the reasons it works so well. When your muscles are properly hydrated, they perform better, recover faster, and feel stronger. The problem starts when people forget the second half of the equation, replacing that water. If your fluid intake stays the same while creatine shifts more water into muscle cells, the rest of your body can start feeling the difference. That's when people report headaches, low energy, muscle cramps, or a dry, sluggish feeling. And unfortunately, creatine gets blamed. But creatine itself isn't dehydrating you. Poor hydration is. Creatine simply changes where water is stored in your body. If you don't drink enough to support that shift, symptoms can show up quickly, especially during workouts, hot weather, or busy days when you forget to hydrate. This is even more important if you're active, drink a lot of coffee, or sweat heavily. Caffeine, training, and daily stress all increase your body's water needs. Add creatine on top of that without adjusting your fluid intake, and you're basically asking your body to run low on resources. The good news? This is one of the easiest side effects to fix. Drinking enough water usually makes these issues disappear completely. You don't need to obsess or chug gallons, just be intentional. Sip water consistently throughout the day instead of waiting until you feel thirsty. Pay attention to signs like dark urine, dry mouth, or afternoon fatigue, and treat them as hydration cues, not creatine problems. Many people are shocked at how much better creatine feels once hydration is handled properly. Energy improves, cramps fade, workouts feel smoother, and recovery gets easier. In other words, creatine starts doing what it's supposed to do. Think of creatine and water as a team. One doesn't work well without the other. So if you ever feel off after starting creatine, don't panic or quit right away. Ask yourself a simple question first. Am I actually drinking enough water? Fix that and for most people, this so-called side effect disappears entirely, turning creatine back into the powerful, reliable supplement it's meant to be. Mistake number four, panicking when the scale goes up. This one scares a lot of people, and it's one of the main reasons they quit creatine too early. You step on the scale, see the number go up, and instantly assume something went wrong. But take a breath, that extra weight is not fat. It's water being stored inside your muscles, and that's exactly what creatine is supposed to do. Creatine pulls water into muscle cells, making them more hydrated. Hydrated muscles contract better, recover faster, and are more resistant to fatigue. This is a performance advantage, not a problem. In fact, this cellular hydration is one of the reasons creatine helps improve strength, endurance, and overall training quality. Your muscles are literally functioning in a better environment. The scale, however, doesn't tell you where weight comes from. It only shows a number. And when that number rises, especially for people trying to stay lean, it can trigger panic. The real mistake isn't the weight increase itself. It's letting the scale convince you that something is wrong and making you quit right when creatine is starting to work. For many people, this weight increase happens within the first one to two weeks. It usually stabilizes once muscle creatine stores are full. After that, changes in body composition become more important than the scale number. Muscles may look fuller, firmer, and more defined. Clothes can fit better. Strength improves, recovery feels smoother, 
None of those benefits show up clearly on a scale. This is why relying only on body weight can be misleading. The mirror, how your clothes fit, your energy levels, and your performance in workouts are much better indicators of progress, especially if you're over 40 or 50, preserving muscle and strength matters far more than chasing the lowest possible number on the scale. So, instead of asking, why did I gain weight? Ask a better question. How do I feel, move, and perform? If you feel stronger, recover faster, and move with more confidence, creatine is doing its job. Don't let a simple number talk you out of something that's actually supporting your health and performance. Mistake number five, overthinking timing and brands. Morning or night, pre-workout or post-workout, with food or on an empty stomach. This is where a lot of people overthink creatine and end up complicating something that's actually very simple. The truth is, creatine isn't picky. Timing barely matters at all. Your muscles don't care if it's 7 a.m. or 9 p.m. They care about one thing, consistency. Creatine works by slowly building up and saturating your muscle cells over time. That means what you do once doesn't matter nearly as much as what you do every single day. Missing doses breaks that saturation process and delays results. Taking it at the perfect time but skipping days will hurt your progress far more than taking it at a random time and being consistent. This is also where the supplement industry loves to confuse people. Pre-workout creatine, post-workout creatine, ultra-absorbable creatine, buffered creatine, liquid creatine. It all sounds impressive, but here's the reality. Over 90% of the research is done on plain creatine monohydrate. It's the simplest, cheapest, and most effective form we have. Those fancy versions are usually just marketing wrapped in a higher price tag. If you want to keep it simple, take 3 to 5 grams of creatine monohydrate once a day, every day. You can mix it into water, juice, or a protein shake. Whatever helps you remember to take it. Some people like taking it after workouts out of habit. Others take it with breakfast so they don't forget. Both are fine. The best time is the time you'll actually stick to. Consistency also makes creatine easier on your stomach. Smaller, regular doses are absorbed smoothly and keep muscle levels stable. No spikes, no guessing, no stress. So instead of chasing perfect timing or falling for fancy labels, focus on the basics. Choose a reputable brand, keep the dose simple, and show up every day. With creatine, boring consistency beats optimal timing every single time. Mistake number six. Thinking creatine replaces effort. This is the biggest mistake of all, and it's the one almost nobody wants to hear. Creatine is powerful, yes, but it's not magic. It doesn't cancel out late nights, skipped workouts, or a diet built on fast food and sugar. If sleep is terrible, movement is non-existent, and recovery is ignored, creatine won't suddenly turn things around. Supplements don't replace habits. They amplify them, for better or worse. Creatine works by helping your muscles produce energy more efficiently. But that energy needs somewhere to go. If you're not moving your body, challenging your muscles, or giving them a reason to adapt, creatine has very little to work with. That's why people who train, even casually, tend to see the biggest benefits. And here's the good news. You don't need to live in the gym. Light resistance training, body weight exercises, walking, or simple home workouts are more than enough to activate the effects. Sleep plays a huge role, too. Muscle growth, recovery, and hormone balance all depend on quality rest. If you're running on five hours of sleep and constant stress, creatine can't override that. It may still help a little, but nowhere near its full potential. The same goes for nutrition. Creatine doesn't build muscle out of thin air. It supports the process when your body has enough protein, calories, and nutrients to recover and grow. Think of creatine like a volume knob, not an on-off switch. If your lifestyle is quiet and inconsistent, turning the knob up won't make much noise. But when your basics are in place, decent sleep, regular movement, and balanced meals, creatine turns all of that up a notch. You feel stronger, recover faster, and perform better over time. So stop treating creatine like a shortcut and start using it as what it really is, a support tool. Build the foundation first 
and let creatine enhance the results you're already earning. So here's the truth. Creatine isn't the problem. Using it the wrong way is. Fix these six mistakes and creatine becomes one of the safest, cheapest, and most effective supplements you can use. Now I want to hear from you. Which mistake do you think you've been making? Or do you want a follow-up video on creatine dosage, side effects, or kidney myths? Drop a comment, hit like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.